All right, we're 11 days after the hurricane. I'm in the upstate of South Carolina, and uh, I had a couple of people reach out to me and ask me if I was all right. And I did much better than most, uh, no damage to the house or anything. I did document a little bit in the beginning, and I thought, you know, I'll throw some content up there. And, you know, just the saw repair business, you know, it really pointed a, me in a direction to realize how important that was. I worked, you know, I'd get up in the morning around five, go fetch fuel for the generator, get everything rolling, get some coffee made, and, you know, start making chains and fixing saws, and then this would go on all day long. Uh, I'd usually get a little bit of a break in between like say four and six, and then about seven o'clock, six, six, seven o'clock, people would start showing up at the end of the day, you know, fixing recoils and making more chain and uh, small ball repairs all the way up until 10 or 11 o'clock, just about every night last week. Um, the long lines, the first few days to get fuel I mean, you had to get there at, you know, six o'clock in the morning to the couple of places that did have fuel. I got to hand it out to QT. They were the class of the field. They had generators on site almost instantly. Lines were long for everything. Um, that settled down by midweek. Uh, I did a lot of charitable work, did a couple of you know, quick repairs and services on some generators in the neighborhood and from some of my own customers. Uh, it was it was great seeing neighbors help neighbors. Um, a lot of selfless things were done. Uh, I gotta say, I didn't realize until later in the week how much worse when things started to come out how Western North Carolina was affected. Everybody just kept saying Asheville, 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 but it was really the rural areas. Uh, I did run into a YouTube channel over the weekend and uh, his name's Mark Honeycutt, um, H-U-N-N-E-Y-C-U-T-T. -T. Um, Mark's got like an aviation channel. I think he's got like a paraglider or something like that. And, and he does all this content, but actually used his YouTube channel. He's, I, got over 100,000 subscribers and just use that to document some real genuine just here's how bad it is you should go check it out it's it's pretty disheartening uh how bad it is I mean Greenville got it really bad um but nothing nothing we had flooding we had you know there's trees down everywhere just the sheer amount of, it didn't matter where you went. It wasn't just a pocket over here and a pocket over here. It was just, it's bad here. It's a little worse over there. You know, I, again, you know, I, I, I'll throw in a couple of videos went earlier in the week, uh, like short clips that I did. But I mean, you, you couldn't drive a block or two without seeing a tree on somebody's house. Didn't matter what side of town you were on. Uh, so, you know, back to the North Carolina thing, you know, the, the mountain people of North Carolina are a tough breed. They've got constitution. They have the will. They are self-sufficient in a lot of ways in their everyday life. Um, they're going to make it, you know, with or without government assistance. The uh, incredible outreach of everyday Americans dropping everything, running supplies, Helicopter airlifts. I mean, it, it was amazing. I took Sunday off yesterday and uh, got a chance to watch some of the heroics of everyday Americans, and it was truly, truly inspiring. Uh, you know, here in Greenville, we had about 14 inches of rain, and then the you know the previous we had um, a lot of rain before the storm ever got here from a different front. Uh, it, it just absolutely. Insane. I was without power for eight days, which is a while. Um, very grateful to have that old hunk of crap generator. But I'm telling you, as loud as that thing was, it was almost like psychological warfare. I mean, I just 
okay, fine. I, I don't want any power. I, the you know refrigerator stay cold overnight. We won't lose any food. Shut that thing off. Uh, it, it really began to grind on us. Uh, you know, so we're 11 days after this. There's still a few trees on houses that hasn't all been done, but I think most of the really truly critical work has been done. People's houses are tarped off. It is going to take months and months and months to rebuild around here. Um, not everybody's got power. You know, when this thing first rolled through, you know, I think Greenville County, the Duke Power said there was like 230,000 customers without power. And that's pr pretty much everybody. Like nobody had power. Um, I'd say 75% uh, power is restored now. Still see some places where there's not power. There's crews from all over the country that are working around here. And you, you really have to think about this. I mean, I'm I'm in Greenville, South Carolina. I'm at least 300 miles as the crow flies away from where this storm hit. Um, it did move fast. The worst of it was around 5.30 in the morning. I stood out there watching the trees sway back and forth and said a little prayer. Hopefully nothing happened. And uh, really was praying for this to, to be over with. Uh, you know, we had anywhere from 70 to 100 mile an hour gusts. Um, yeah, pretty impressive, you know. I've done a few hurricanes and, you know, kept thinking, you know, okay, this is it's a fast moving storm. It'll be out of here. It'll be out of here. But it really took a long time, it seemed like. Um, you know, it, the sun was out and incredibly windy at, you know, noontime. You know, when the, the brunt of it and the worst of it here locally was at like 530 in the morning. I'll insert a couple of clips in here. And um, you guys just, and, and a few still pictures. Uh, the pictures of the, the house that's got the trees on and the trees in the backyard. That's my, my old house, my ex-wife's house. And uh, I couldn't even get over to her, you know, while the storm was going. There were just trees down everywhere. Every road was blocked. I tried four, five, six different ways to get into the neighborhood. And there was just in between overflow creeks and just hundreds of trees in the road. Um, there was no way of getting in until things kind of calmed down a little bit. You know, she's fine. The house has got major damage, um, but she's doing good. So let's, after that lengthy intro, um, I'll show you a few stills and a few videos. Well, I don't know el else how to describe this. It's eight o'clock on Sunday morning. That line's as far as I can see to get into QT. There's a coffee shop that's got power. I've never seen that many people lined up for a little bit of caffeine. Uh, I'm about five miles from my house and this is the first place with power. And that's uh, the road that's on the other side of the coffee shop. There's six lanes. There's a Walmart down the street and uh, at least we have nice weather. Uh, what a mess. I'll show you some damage. All right, so there's a line to get coffee. And there's a coffee shop. <laughs> oh my goodness. There's people screaming and hollering at each other over a QT about cutting in line. Horns blowing. What was that old saying? Everything I need to know I learned in kindergarten. We're still 48 hours after um, a hurricane rolled through. And one of the things I've never seen before is that the damage is everywhere. It's not localized. I'm in Greenville, South Carolina, where even as a crow flies, you know, 200 miles from the coast. And the damage is everywhere. Everybody has some form of damage across the entire, I, I guess, western side of the state. Um, I gave him a hand uh, the other day doing a little bit of cutting. And, you know, I, this is my little neighborhood right here. It's, uh, you know, Rudy's got stuff down. Um, 
at the end of my street right there. Turn left, there's trees down. Turn right, there's trees down. And it's two days later. Uh, some of it's passable, some of it's not. Um, you know, again, I'm pretty fortunate. You know, this neighbor's okay. I didn't see anything horrible. You know, but I've just got tons of debris down. Very, very grateful that, uh, whew. but there's uprooted trees. You know, I mean, I, all I have is just, you know, this nonsense, uh, some branches, but Rudy's got two, my neighbor right there, he's got two trees down root bald uh he had two trees stewart my other neighbor here don't think he has anything you know i've got a whole row of lelands behind me i thought for sure those would be down or that river birch uh i thought either one of these oaks in my front yard would have blown over um you know maybe the wooded lot over here gave me a little bit of buffer i don't know uh but I, we're gonna be weeks without power. This little rascal right here has got some raised eyebrows. That's my ported 65 CC solo. Uh, <laughs> uh, I've had multiple offers on it and obviously it's not for sale. Uh, this old beater of a generator has been in my carport for about three years. Um, it needed a gas tank. And the inside is just nothing but a big pile of rust rubble. There's the remote gas tank. Took this off of my Forrest Gump snapper lawnmower and ran a fuel line down to it. I actually had a carburetor for this and it's been sitting downstairs for at least three years, maybe four. Uh, it fired right up. And you know, for some creature comforts, I'm not smart enough to um, wire this into my AC shutoff system or my box but anyway i'm captain drop cord and i've got some creature comforts that i'm so grateful for well that's impressive the road didn't used to go that way that's crazy talk All right, with all that, uh, just a reminder, if you do feel like being generous and you are in, you know, close to being able to drop off something in the surrounding areas of Asheville, Western North Carolina, Tennessee, Northern Georgia, we've got a cold front that's moving in and uh, a lot of these people are gonna need some warm clothes. So if you can donate something like that um, and then maybe remember them in about a month or so. They seem like they've been inundated with supplies um, and uh, they're going to need more for a lot longer. So, you know, I don't know if you want to write something on the calendar for next month. Sorry, I'm pretty haggard. It was a long week last week. I mean, it was 100 plus hours. Um, I'm not the biggest prepper or anything like that. You know, I try and keep stuff. It really was nice having, bat you know, spare batteries for flashlights and stuff like that. Um, bar and chain oil around town disappeared surprisingly fast. Um, you know, you probably got 10,000 homeowners out running to you know, try and grab gas and two stroke oil and bar and chain oil so they can you know, clear their driveway or you know, clear their yard or whatever. Um, I was pretty well prepared, but no way, shape or form did I ever think that this storm would have hit us this hard. So you know, just as a side note, maybe it's time to take a look at your own stuff for just the next natural disaster. You know, you may not be in a hurricane area, but you know, whatever happens, uh, make a concerted effort to uh, keep a few extra staples around and have a plan for when power goes out. It's a, uh, uh, it only took three days of not trying to flip light switches 
to stop reaching for a light switch that didn't work. Uh, thank you so much. And that's my update for Helene. Back to getting saw fixed. My shop's a wreck. There's stuff everywhere. Oh yeah, and the basement flooded too. That, so that was nice to clean up just to get started. Ah, see you on the next one.